Then comes the next complementary point to which Sheikh Al-Fawzan brings a small heading. A'zamu ma nahallahu anhu ash-shirk. The most serious thing which Allah forbade is shirk. So the previous section was the, the greatest matter commanded by Allah is tawheed. And now we have this section here which goes along with it. A'lamu ma nahallahu anhu ash shirk. The most serious thing which Allah forbade is shirk. And then there comes the saying of the author, the text, the saying of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, wa a'lamu ma naha anhu ash shirk. And the most serious thing which Allah forbade is shirk. Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, said in explanation, his saying, Rahimahullah, wa a'lamu ma nahallahu anhu shirk. And the most serious thing which Allah forbade is shirk. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, this is a tremendous point of benefit. Because some people believe that there are things which are the worst crimes and the worst thing which Allah has forbidden. And some people wrongly think that there are other things besides shirk which are the worst of things, the worst crimes and which are the worst thing which Allah has forbidden. So he says, such a person says, a river, usury, is the most serious of the forbidden things. A zina, fornication, is the greatest of forbidden things. I mean, there are people who think this, people who call to this, and state the like of this. So the Sheikh said, and therefore they focus upon forbidding usury, riba, and fornication and corruption of manners and behavior. However, they do not give importance to the matter of shirk and they do not warn against it. And yet they see the people falling into it. So this is a case of tremendous ignorance of the revealed law of Allah, the perfect and most high. So the most serious thing that Allah has forbidden is shirk. So it is more serious than riba, than usury. And it is more serious than drinking alcohol. And more serious than stealing. And more serious than falsely devouring the wealth of the people. And more serious than betting and gambling it is the most serious of the forbidden things it's the worst of the forbidden things and the proof is his saying the most high قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقٍ نحن نرزقكم وإياهم ولا تقربوا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تعقلون ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم إلا بالتي هي أحسن The ayahs, the Sheikh said, to the end of the ayahs and these ayahs are called الوصايا الأشر Literally, the, the Ten Commandments. Surah Al-An'am, Six Surah, Ayah 151 to 152. The, with the explanation, Say, come, I will recite to you what my Lord has truly forbidden for you. Do not associate anything along with Allah and treat the parents well and do not kill your children for fear of poverty 
we shall provide for you and for them and do not approach shameful sins whether apparent or hidden and do not do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden except by right this is what he has commanded you with so that you may understand and do not approach the wealth of the orphan except in a manner which is best the Shaykh said until the end of the ayahs and these matters are called al-wasai al-ashr the ten, enjoy, the ten things which are enjoined the ten commandments something like that the Shaykh said quoting the, the beginning of the ayah again قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ so these ayahs begin with that part of the ayah with the explanation say come I will recite to you that which your Lord has made haram has made forbidden for you right up until he is saying ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ with the explanation that is what he has enjoined you with what he has commanded you with so that you may understand the Shaykh said Surah Al-An'am the 6th Surah Ayah 151 to 152 then the Shaykh said these forbidden acts Allah began them with his saying Allah tushriku bihi shay'a with the explanation that you do not associate anything along with him you do not do shirk with him you do not associate anything with him this list of forbidden things the first thing was the first commandment there that you do not associate anything along with him the shaykh said so this proves that shirk is the greatest thing the most serious thing which Allah has forbidden in this whole list here that mentions all these things including murder and so on and so forth it began with shirk and then the shaykh gives a further evidence he said and there occurs in Surah Al-Isra Allah the Most High said لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا Surah Al-Isra the 17th Surah Ayah 22 with the explanation do not set up another object of worship along with Allah and so become one who is blameworthy and forsaken the Shaykh said he began with a prohibition of shirk and he concluded it with a forbiddance of shirk and the Shaykh is referring to the ayahs as he makes clear in the next part of the ayah all the ayahs in Surah Al-Isra 17th Surah Ayah 22 all the way through to ayah 39 so the shaykh said he began it with a prohibition of shirk this list of things and he concluded it with a prohibition of shirk so he said وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَتُلْقَى فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَلُومًا مَدْحُورًا 39th ayah with the explanation and do not set up another object of worship along with Allah so that you are cast into hell fire rebuked and banished the Shaykh said so this proves that it is the most serious thing that Allah has forbidden this proves the saying of the Shaykh I mean the saying of the author here and the greatest thing that Allah forbade is shirk I mean again in this list of ayahs here the first thing that's forbidden is shirk and at the end again the forbidden of shirk is repeated again then Shaykh Fawzan said and there occurs in the authentic hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked which sin is greatest so he said an taj'ala allahi niddan wa huwa khalakaka that you set up a rival for Allah when it is He who created you it was said then which? he said أن تقتل ولدك خشية 
and yak amamaaka. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was asked which is next, I mean which is next after shirk, he said that you kill your child for fear that he will consume food along with you. He said, oh, he said it was said. Then which? He said, and tuzania halilata jarik that you commit adultery with the wife of your neighbor in a footnote they mention the hadith is reported by al-Bukhari hadith 6861 and reported by Muslim as hadith 86 from a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu in other words that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is directly asked which of the sins is the greatest sin of all the worst sin of all so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa responded that you set up a rival for Allah when he it is who created you that was the first then after that he asked which is next which is the next sin that you kill your child murder you kill your own murdering your own child you kill your own child for fear, for fear that he will consume food along with you then he asked which is next worst, worst after that that you commit adultery with the wife of your neighbor so which was quoted first out of those shirk then Shaykh Farzan said and Allah sent down the confirmation of that in his saying وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th Surah, Ayah 68 With the explanation, these ayahs been in the context of the believers, the description of the believers with the explanation and those who do not call upon another object of worship along with Allah and they do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden except by right and they do not commit fornication and whoever does these things will receive punishment Sheikh Fawzan said so he began with shirk in his saying in the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and taj'ala lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqaka that you set up a rival the shaykh said meaning a partner for Allah when it is he who created you and he said that this is the greatest of sins because he was asked which sin is greatest which sin is worst so he began with shirk and he gives a further evidence he said and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ijtanibu sab al mubiqat keep away from the seven destructive sins so it was said wa ma hunna ya rasulullah and what are they o messenger of allah he said ashirku billah والسحر وقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق to the end of the hadith when he, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said keep away from the seven destructive sins and it was said to him what are they O messenger of Allah he said committing shirk with Allah and sihr and sorcery and killing the soul which Allah has made forbidden except with right to the end of the hadith in a footnote they mentioned the hadith being reported by al-Bukhari as hadith 2766 and reported by Muslim as hadith number 89 from a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu from a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu again Shaykh al said he began it with shirk so this shows that shirk is the greatest of all sins and that is because the mushrik the person of shirk will never enter paradise the mushrik will never ever enter jannah never enter paradise ever he the most high said innahu man yushrik billahi faqad harrama allahu alayhi aljanna wa ma'awahu nar وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah 72 
with the explanation whoever associates anything with Allah whoever commits shirk with Allah whoever associates anything with Allah then Allah has made paradise forbidden for him and his abode will be the hellfire and the disbelieving wrongdoers will have no helper Sheikh Farzan said the mushrik the person of shirk Allah will not forgive him إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 48 with the explanation Allah does not forgive that shirk, be, that shirk be committed with him Allah does not forgive that anyone else be associated with him and he forgives whatever is less than that to whomever he wishes Shaykh al said so this proves that Jannah that paradise is haram is forbidden for the mushrik for the person of shirk and that Allah will not forgive him and it proves that shirk is the greatest of all sins since all sins except for shirk can be met with forgiveness with maghfirah all sins, every single sin can be forgiven by Allah but not shirk except for shirk and the shirk was evidence inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha same ayah with the explanation Allah does not forgive that shirk be committed with him and he forgives whatever is less than that to whomever he wishes surah al-nisa for surah ayah 48 then Shaykh Farzan said so a zina fornication and a sariqa theft and shurb al-khamr drinking alcohol and a riba taking usury all of it enters under al mashia all of it enter under, enters under Allah's wish and will if Allah wishes he will forgive its person he will forgive the person who commits it and if he wishes he will punish him but as for shirk then it will not be forgiven Allah has passed judgment that he will not forgive him he will not forgive it and likewise the, the person of sin even if he has committed kabair even if he has committed major sins which are less than shirk then paradise will not be forgiven for paradise will not be for, forbidden for him a person who is a sinner committed sins even if some of those sins are major sins kabair but which are less than shirk then paradise has not been made forbidden for him his final destination will indeed be paradise either Allah will forgive him straight away and enter him into paradise or otherwise he will come out of the fire after being punished in it and he will enter into, into Jannah, into paradise that Shaykh Bawazan mentions the position of the people of the, of the, of the Sunnah the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regard to people of, who commit and die upon major sin that sooner or later they will enter into Jannah, enter into paradise either Allah will forgive them and they will enter paradise straight away or they will be punished in the fire for some time and then taken out and placed in paradise the Shaykh said, the mu'min, the believer no matter what evils and sins occur from him which are less than shirk he will not despair of the mercy of Allah and he will not be forbidden from paradise and he enters within forgiveness by the wish, by the Mashia, by the wish and will of Allah, the Perfect and Most High. Then he quotes the case of the Mushrik, the person of Shirk. He said, As
as for the mushrik then he will be deprived and forbidden of all of that and Allah's refuge is sought in the person of the mushrik the person upon shirk he will be deprived of Allah's forgiveness he will not receive Allah's forgiveness and he will not receive Jannah so Shaykh said as for the mushrik he will, he will be deprived of forbidden all of that and Allah's refuge is sought so this proves that shirk is the greatest of all sins he the most high said inna shirka la dhulmun azim surah luqman the 31st surah ayah 13 with the explanation shirk is the greatest wrongdoing shirk is the greatest dhulm shirk is the greatest wrongdoing and Shaykh Fazan said and he the perfect said وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ افْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 48 with the explanation and whoever associates anything with Allah then he has invented a tremendous sin and Shaykh Fawzan quotes another ayah from the same surah وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 116 with the explanation and whoever associates anything along with Allah then he has indeed strayed far away from the true path Shaykh Fawzan said all of this proves that shirk is the greatest of sins and since shirk and Shaykh Fawzan having amply, amply clarified and proven this point with evidence that shirk is indeed as the author mentioned the greatest of all sins the worst of all sins without exception and he moves on to the next point that, that follows on from it he said and since shirk is the greatest of sins then it is obligatory upon the ulama it is obligatory upon the scholars and the educated people to forbid it and to warn against it and that they do not remain silent from warning against shirk and it is obligatory to fight jihad against the people of shirk along with ability just as Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fought jihad against them he the most high said فَاقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْصُرُوهُمْ وَاقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْصَدْ Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, ayah 5 With explanation, then kill the people of shirk, kill the mushrikeen Wherever you find them, and seize them, and besiege them, and lie in wait for them in every ambush Ya Allah Shaykh Fawzan said so it is therefore obligatory to warn against shirk and to clarify it to the people so that they avoid it this is what is obligatory as for remaining silent about shirk and leaving the people passionately involved in worshipping other than Allah whilst they claim to be upon Islam and there is no one forbidding them and no one warning them then the matter is very serious there are some people who turn attention to forbidding riba, usury and fornication and corruption of manners these are forbidden matters and contain corruption however shirk is greater shirk is more serious so why is attention not given to warning against shirk <coughs> and warning or rather shirk said also why is attention not given to prohibiting shirk to forbidding shirk and warning against shirk and explaining what many people have fallen into with regard to major shirk a shirk al akbar whilst they claim to be upon Islam 
So Sheikh raises the question oh, Why do all these callers to this and that In the name of Islam they call to this or forbid this and forbid Why do they not give attention to this Warning against shirk, forbidding shirk Why not When many people have fallen into it Into major shirk And they claim, claim to be upon Islam Why is this the case The Sheikh said Why is there laxity With regard to the matter of shirk and disregard of it and leaving the people to fall into it and the people of knowledge are present indeed they live along with those people and remain silent with them what is obligatory is to turn attention firstly to forbidding this tremendous danger which has devastated the ummah Every sin is less than it. And what is obligatory is to begin with what is most important, then with what is next in importance.